Yeah, hello Paul. Nice to invite you here. Uh, would you say hello to all the audience from the Block Temple and Asia audience or communities to the camera? Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome and uh, thank you very much for having me. It's an absolute pl uh, pleasure to be here in Taipei for this very important conference. Yeah, so Paul, is this your first time being in Taipei, Taiwan? And what do you think of Taiwan? No, no, I've spent many, um, many uh, uh, days and even weeks here in Taipei over uh, a number of different years. Throughout my career, um, focusing my, uh, my legal practice on law and technology, I've naturally been drawn to Taipei with all the innovation, all the entrepreneurship here. And so whether it's visiting clients, uh, whether it's uh, meeting with regulators, whether it's uh, meeting with the courts, I've had the pleasure of spending uh, a lot of time here in Taipei and I always look forward to it. Yeah, so today I'm so, so excited because as a crypto lawyer in Taiwan, I want to explore some of the legal issues in uh, between the Coinbase and the US uh, regulations. So Paul, can as a chief legal officer at Coinbase, can you share a little bit about uh, Coinbase as a leading exchange in US state, uh, uh, United States? What's the legal challenge has Coinbase has faced in the past and in the present? And how did you solve this problem? Well, as a global cryptocurrency platform, Coinbase uh, faces many legal challenges as countries all over the world are uh, working to establish clear rules uh, to govern everything from the custody of customer assets to the listing of uh, different cryptocurrency tokens to uh, ways in which uh, uh, cryptocurrency platforms like Coinbase can assist law enforcement in monitoring suspicious activity and potential criminal activity on the platform. Yeah. So all of these uh, challenges create all sorts of um, opportunities for myself and my team yeah. uh, as the legal team at Coinbase to engage and, and represent not just Coinbase, but the entire industry. Yeah, yeah, I totally uh, agree. So we know that right now there is still a legislation between Coinbase and SEC. Uh, as this uh, typical question, what's your view about this regulatory body and what do you think the SEC will do in this kind of uh, uh, litigation? Yes. Well, you are right to point out that we are uh, engaged in active litigation with the Securities and Exchange Commission in the United States. It's unfortunate. Uh, no company uh, uh, relishes uh, uh, the challenge of facing off against uh, its uh, regulators in any country, and Coinbase is no exception to that, and we feel that way with respect to the SEC. But we're very confident that uh, through this legal process, Coinbase will achieve what has always been its goal, which is clarity for the market as a whole as to yeah. what the rules are for crypto, uh, how we are to comply with those rules, and what are the best ways for customers and investors to be protected. So for Coinbase, um, while litigation is never our first or even second choice, uh, if this is the way the law will provide clarity for all of us, uh, we look forward to that uh, ultimate resolution. Yeah, I think this is so important because Coinbase can clean up a path for others exchange and other best business provider in the yes. future. So thank you for your sacrifice, I think. <laughs> well, we're, happy to, we're happy to do it. And, you know, and I should say also that we recognize that um, as a leading cryptocurrency platform, yeah. Coinbase has a responsibility to the entire industry to uh, achieve this clarity, whether, uh, whether we have to take on that burden ourselves or in concert with our partners. Yeah, so uh, for, uh, to you, I think your background is so interesting because you also be, in the past, you serve as, as a judge in the yeah. US, uh, in the United States. And how did you ele uh, evaluate the recent, uh, the, the current U, uh, US crypto regulation right now in this stage? Well, you were right to point out that earlier in my career, I did serve as a judge in the federal courts in the United States. Yeah. I sat in the courthouse re responsible for Silicon Valley and so had the privilege of presiding over many uh, important cases involving global technology firms, Apple, Samsung, Oracle, Google, you name it, they all made their way to my courtroom in one form or fashion. Um, wow. And in that experience or from that experience, I came to see that uh, there was so, still so much to be done in practice, in private practice, to help shape the law and mm. achieve clear rules for industries that were going to change the way that we would all live. Mm. And so that's why I decided uh, uh, now over eight years ago to step off the bench uh, return to uh, industry and hopefully um, for cryptocurrency, bring the same type of clarity mm. and um, and common sense uh, that mm. I tried to achieve as a judge. Yeah, so I think right now the U.S. has a big election in in this uh, this do. year. So, if uh, what will you suggest for the new government in the in the future about the crypto regulations? Well, you're right. We have a very important election in yeah. the United States in November, uh, where yeah. we will choose not only our new president but uh, additionally, members of our Congress and other uh, officials. 
Uh, it's a very important moment for the United States because uh, up until this point, we have uh, unfortunately seen crypto become a political issue, yeah. uh, a topic that uh, Democrats and Republicans in our country have, have unfortunately not been able to reach a consensus on. I'm hopeful that regardless of which party is ultimately uh, uh, placed into power, um, we're going to see uh, uh, very quickly rules emerge for cryptocurrencies because whether you're a Democrat or Republican or an independent, um, uh, having sensible rules that protect investors but that allow this innovation and technology to thrive is in the U.S. interest and I would argue in the global interest because the yeah. U.S. Is, in a, is a market that we all have to pay very careful attention to. Yes, I agree. Because I think uh, in the future, the Bitcoin and crypto issues will be the both party have to answer. And because this is not only U.S. interest, but also the global interest yes. that we are getting involved. Well, I think as lawyers, you and I can both appreciate yeah. that, uh, you know, it is never a it's never a good thing for there to be confusion about what the law is. Better to have clear rules, even if you disagree with them, than to have no rules at all. Yeah, agree. So uh, I want to ask a little bit more about the Asia part. Yes. So how does the Coinbase uh, ne uh, navigate the difference in the crypto regulatory between U.S. and Asia re regions? How did you uh, yes. to ensure the compliance to the Asia-based uh, regulations? Well, Coinbase uh, has built its entire business uh, and reputation on a foundation of trust and compliance and following the rules no matter where we operate. And so although we started as a U.S company and a U.S. exchange. We've now uh, operated globally for a number of years and um, from, from the very earliest days have committed uh, around the world, certainly here in Asia, mm -hmm. to following the law, uh, wh whatever that law may be in any particular country. Yeah. I think, you know, as, as you can appreciate more than most, and I suspect your, your viewers as well, um, Asia is as diverse within uh, the, the continent as it is with the rest of the world. Yeah. And so um, it is very important that companies like Coinbase take the time and invest the resources to understand the rules for full compliance across the region. Yeah. And regardless of differences that may apply here in Taiwan and Singapore yeah. or anywhere else. Yeah, so thank you. So the last question, I want to uh, talk about Taiwan because Taiwan, yes. we have just passed a new AML regulation. And for the vast business, we have you have to registration from the government and the authority, and then you can provide the virtual assets business. Yes. So as your respective, is there any consideration or plan that you can share with us to expand in uh, to, for the Coinbase to expand to Asia and or including Taiwan? Well, Taiwan is a very important market uh, and it's one that, you know, we at Coinbase pay very careful attention to, not only because of the opportunities that may uh, lie here uh, for us and for others in the future, but because of Taiwan's important contribution to the global conversation around topics such as money laundering, uh, suspicious uh, activity monitoring, sanctions compliance, and the like. And so uh, I very much applaud the Taiwanese government for its um, forward thinking and progress in enacting sensible AML standards that um, I think will serve as a model for other countries as well. And so it's critically important that we pay attention uh, to those rules and to that law and to see how it evolves over time, uh, even as we're making decisions uh, in the future about where to invest and where to make uh, further developments in our business. Well, thank you, Paul. So I look forward to see you more often in Taiwan. Thank and you. thank you for the interview. So that's that's for all. And say bye bye to the Block, uh, block Ten Post reader. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank, thank you, you so much. So nice to have you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank yeah. you for having me. Can, can we take a picture? Oh, I'd, be, I'd be honored. Absolutely.